Hey guys, welcome back to Dan's Chess Lounge. Today I'm going to start a new series. It's going to be a preview of the players that's playing in the Candidates Tournament coming up in a couple of weeks. Today I've selected Sergei Karyakin, and I'm going to talk a little bit about who he is, and then I'm going to show you guys a game. Now, Sergei Karyakin was born on January 12, 1990, so he's a relatively young guy. He's only 28 years old. Uh, now he's a Russian GM, but initially he was representing the Ukraine. Uh, he was uh, he was born in the Ukraine, but he switched his citizenship uh, a few years ago because he felt like the chess training was better in Russia. And then he also uh, had more sponsorships and more money coming in from uh, Russian backers. So he's he's a Russian GM now. That's that's. Uh, the state that he represents. The thing about Sergei Karyakin is that he was awarded the GM title at 12 years old in seven months. And that's the youngest that a player has ever been awarded the GM title. And, that, and he still holds that record to this day as being the youngest GM ever. His playing style is defensive. And not to say anything is wrong with being defensive, but uh, his nickname is the Rush, Russia's Minister of Defense. So all the players know that he's going to uh, he's gonna be a tough cookie to crack, basically. He has, ex he has excellent uh, defensive skills. So, okay, let's go ahead and get into the game. Uh, the game that I selected for you all is where he played Veselin Topalov, who is a former world champion. And this game took place at the 2017 Gashimov Memorial. And let's go ahead, dive in, and see what happened. Karyakin was white. He played e4, c6. You have the Karo Khan. d4, d5. The advanced variation here, c5. Now let me say a little bit about this first few moves here. Uh, white spent two tempo moving the e pawn. So black decided to spend two tempos moving his C pawn. And this way black will be able to free up his, his position a little bit, get more space, and attack the center. Normally you don't want to move the same piece twice in the opening. That's not good opening principles. But if white spent the tempo doing it, black feels like he can do the same thing and get away with it. You have D takes C, E6. Now the Black's pawn structure actually looks like a French defense pawn structure. A3, the idea behind A3 is to eventually play B4 and then stick the dark square bishop on B2 to protect the pawn on E5. So now you have bishop takes C. And then knight F3 is played in the game, which is a, which is a good developing move here. There's nothing wrong with that. A lot of times you will see, like I was saying, B4, uh, the move b4 and then followed up with bishop b2 and c4 and that's like a, another break move black's gonna be have i mean excuse me white's gonna have a nice free game where all of the pieces can come out and it'd be a nice position for for white but in the game he played knight f3 good developing move knight e7 clears the way for black to castle Bishop d3 is a developing move, and now white is also looking to castle. Knight is coming to g6. White has to worry about and look out for knight coming to f4, which will attack this bishop here. White castle, so now the bishop does not have a retreat square if he gets attacked. Knight c6, attacking the pawn here, double attack on the pawn. B4 hits puts the question to the bishop. Bishop retreats to B6. Bishop B2. Now the pawn is protected. And the bishop is on a nice diagonal there. Knight F4 hits that bishop there. And now the bishop doesn't have a good space to retreat. So black is going to be able to swap off one of white's best attacking pieces for his knight. C4 is played, 
Black swaps off the light square bishop. Queen takes d3. D takes c. Queen takes. And now you have knight e7. Uh, the idea behind knight e7 is that black wants to just put his, his knight a little closer to the king's side. If you notice, there was no uh, pieces over there. No minor or major pieces except for the rook still that to defend the, the position over there. So this is more like a um, prophylactic move to, to help out for when white starts to attack. Knight c3. And then I'm showing you here that the, the knight can hop to d5, f5, or, or g6, wherever his defenses is needed most. Bishop d7, a developing move. Queen g4. White is threatening to capture the pawn on g7. Bishop c6. So black is allowing white to capture that pawn on g7. What happens if he takes the pawn? Queen takes g7. <clears throat> Excuse me. Rook g8. Now you have queen takes h7. That would be bad because now the bishop there can take the knight. And that's going to be winning for black there. So you wouldn't want to do that. So if the queen went to f6. Now you have knight f5, and black has an excellent game here. Queen takes queen, rook takes queen, and black has full compensation for that g-pawn. Actually taking that g-pawn just exposed white uh, too much, really, on that file, that g-file. The rook can just dominate that file, and you have both bishops. Highlight this bishop as well. That is a lot of pressure there. So that's full compensation for the pawn. So Karyakin did not take that pawn. He actually played rook a d1. He didn't want that heat on him, and I don't blame him. Rook a d1. Queen goes to c7. Now he plays knight g5, but that leaves the pawn on e5 unprotected. So... Topolov goes right in for it. He takes that pawn on e5. That's a central pawn. Karyakin plays b5. Hits the bishop there on c6. h5 attacks the queen. So white has to move the queen. Moves it to h4. Bishop takes b5. So now Topolov is up two pawns here. He recently grabbed two pawns. But the thing is, my I don't know about you guys, but if my opponent is giving away material left and right for for the initiative to get his attack off, I'm not going to take every single piece of material. You know, sometimes it's not good to to take it, and you need to develop your own position. Like looking at Black's position, it looks fine, but he still needs the castle. Black's king is still in the middle of the board. So it, it would be better for him to develop his position instead of grabbing material, in my opinion. Rook f e1. Hits the queen. Queen moves over to f5. White captures the bishop. Queen captures back. Now that leaves g7 unprotected. White takes, bishop takes g7, and the knight hits the queen and the bishop. Knight fork here. So what would you do? Guys, pause the video right here and try to figure out what you would do in this position right here if you were white. How do you save the queen and the bishop or one or the other? Knight e6. Yes. Brilliant move. Knight e6. White's queen is hanging there. If he takes the if he takes the queen, then you guys see what comes next. Pause the video if you don't see it. Knight c7 checkmate. Yes. So he can't do that. So he plays f takes knight instead. Now you have rook 
takes e6, crashing in. King goes to f7. Queen f6, check. King goes to g8. Bishop takes the rook on h8. And it's looking real sketchy for the black king here. White's got all of his pieces surrounding him. Bishop takes f2. Last ditch effort to get some counterplay. But Karyaki just scoots over to h1. There's no need to take the bishop there and expose his king. Just scoots over to h1. Queen a4, which hits the rook there. But rook e d6 reinforces it. Rook f8 hits the queen, and it also saves the knight. That way, the white queen can't take the knight. But white has bigger plans than just taking the knight. Queen g6, check. Now you have the finishing move. Can anyone see what it is? Pause the video, guys, if you don't see it. Rook d7. And Topalov resigned at this moment here because there's no good way to stop queen h7 checkmate. The only good way, there's no good way, but the only way to stop it is for black to give up his queen with either queen takes d1 or queen takes d7. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the game today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.